I believe in the inerrant literal word of God. Chances are, you've heard these words passionately proclaimed by a devout Christian in a testimony of faith. And while no one wants to criticize the word of God or call it into question, a number of prominent passages can leave us wondering if that's really the best method of interpretation. Was the world really created in six days? Did Noah fit every single creature on the ark before the flood? And what do we do when we encounter contradictions? For this reason, many in the Christian world forego a strictly literal reading for a method that includes science, history, and literature. This is Catholicism in Focus. <laughs> As a rule, there's nothing wrong with reading a scriptural text literally. Some passages mean exactly what they say. When a text is read in this way because all of scripture, as a rule, should be read literally, there's room for suspicion. A few years ago, writer A.J. Jacobs, recognizing the abundance of seemingly strange laws in the Bible, decided to live an entire year following everything it said as literally as possible. He had no bacon cheeseburgers, did absolutely no work for an entire day each week, and even threw little pebbles at adulterers to stone them. What he found was that no one, not even the most zealous Jews or Christians, read the entire Bible literally. To some extent, we all have a process of interpreting and understanding the text beyond the base definitions of the words. For Catholics and many other Christians, this is not a new revelation. The fact that we do not follow everything literally is not in any way an indictment of our faith, nor does it mean that we pick and choose what we want to follow. We have always known that not everything in the Bible is even meant to be taken at face value and have worked to get beneath the text to understand the meaning behind it. In the modern world, that means using some variation of what is called the historical critical method of study. In reality, this method is a series of methods used differently depending on one's faith tradition, but all seeking to answer the same simple question. What did the human author mean to say in the context in which it was written? In order to understand what the text meant to say, biblical scholars first have to determine what the text is in the first place. As I mentioned in a previous video, the Bible did not fall from heaven fully written, but was the result of many years of prayer, reflection, editing, and copying before becoming the book that we have today. Along the way, things were copied incorrectly, added, misplaced, or altogether lost. Using textual criticism, scholars are able to take all the fragments we have, compare them, and try to compile what might have been the original text. To do this, scholars use linguistic and semantic analysis, studying what we know about the use and development of ancient languages to determine when a text might have been written and how it may have adapted over time, as well as literary criticism, which organizes the text into coherent parts. This is where we originally got chapter and verse numbers. Analyzing the word choice and style of the text can help scholars pinpoint when it was written, but also identify whether it was composed by a single author or is the compilation of different sources. It's sort of like when a poor writer has a paragraph in their essay with really sophisticated words and complex sentence structure. Pretty good indicator it came from somewhere else. From there, using genre and tradition criticism, scholars are able to place the text in all of its many parts within the social milieu in which it was influenced. What events were taking place when this was written? What other forms of writing at this time may have influenced its style or content? While these investigations may seem cumbersome or overly scientific for something as spiritual as reading scripture, in essence, all it's doing is helping us to do what we already do every day. We're trying to place something within a context so we know how to read it. When you pick up a history textbook, you're gonna read its words a little differently than if you were to pick up a recent tabloid or article from a satire website. Why? because they were written for different people and meant for different purposes. Even though the Bible is all bound together in one book, it may seem like it came from the same distant world. The fact of the matter is that the oldest and newest parts of the Bible are close to a thousand years apart, are written in different languages, represent various genres, and have varying levels of importance for our faith today. Each text needs to be read and interpreted in a different way, because really, each text was meant to be read in a different way. Does this complicate things? Of course it does. Having to admit that the text is complicated, diverse, and may not have a clear meaning is not what we want to hear. But reading every text in the same uncritical way, that is, reading everything literally as it's written, completely disregards the power of literature to convey the Word of God in different ways and sacrifices the nuance of meaning in order to make it easier for us to read. And really, such a style of interpretation calls into question why we read the Bible in the first place. Are we reading it because we want to talk and act just as people did 3,000 years ago? We want to have the same scientific and historical information they did? We want to build our societies and governments the way they did? Or do we read the Bible to have the faith that they had? To know about God and to find our place in salvation history? The Bible is not a history book, nor is it a scientific journal, code of law, or book of fairy tales. 
Although it does contain elements of all of those things, the Bible is a book of faith that shares what the people of God have said about God over time. What matters is not the particular acts or words taken literally or out of context, but the faith taken as a whole that it reveals to us even today and the way that it places us within the story of salvation history. If the historical critical method helps us to remove the bias of the human experience and uncover the deposit of faith, then it truly is an invaluable part of our spiritual reading of the Bible. Thanks for watching this episode of Catholicism in Focus, brought to you by Hunter Osborne and all the Patreon patrons. If you'd like to support this mission of evangelization and catechesis, or just looking to learn more about the faith, the best place to start is by liking and sharing this video, subscribing to this channel, and checking out all the great content on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my blog, breakinginthehabit.org.